Good morning. Right now it's 8.57. This is KHEA Radio. Kickstart. I'm Gardy. I got Gina here in studio. We're going to chat a bit before we go on the FM. If you're watching on Facebook, feel free to share this out. We're going to be talking about the Santa Fe Education Foundation as they celebrate 10 years. Gina, how are you doing today? Awesome. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for hanging out. What thanks. you been up to? Well, thanks for having us back. Mm-hmm. Um, just been working and getting ready for our big 10-year anniversary gala coming up in a month. Actually, 29 days. 29 days away. You got it. Yeah, it's sneaking up quick. What all has been prepared so far and what still needs to be done? So there's we have an amazing um, gala committee and everyone's been working hard. We have a lot of surprises, so we can't really share too many details. Yes. But um, we'll be at the Nestler Center on 2-2020, hence the Ask Me About yes. 2020. Okay. And... Um, It'll be a wonderful evening. We have dinner by Grazia. We have um, an MC. We have a keynote speaker, both of which will be um, really a great addition to the night. And, um, you know, just really looking forward to it all coming together. Yeah. Galas are really cool. They're a lot of fun. Yes. People get to dress up, kind of, you know, learn and, and listen to some uh, interesting speakers yes. and then the food. So, Grazia, what kind of food is that? It's Italian. It's Italian food. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard of them, but I've never had their food before. Is it good? Have it, you had it? It was a hit last year, yes. So that's why we're having them back. Yes. And um, so one of the great things about our gala is that it does say cocktail attire, but it's a little bit more um, casual. Yeah. So men can come in jeans and a sport coat or, you know, ladies in business casual and I actually received feedback about a week ago from someone who attended the first time last year. And she said that it was just like a family atmosphere. Everyone was very comfortable, very, you know, cordial. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, maybe not having it so formal lent it to being, yeah. you know, a more of a family-like atmosphere. So yeah. that was really great to hear. Cool. Hey, are galas generally like in the beginning of the year? Or are they all all the time? They're kind of sprinkled throughout the the year, depending on, like I know the different education foundations in the area. Some are in the fall, some yeah. are in the spring, some are in the winter. So, it just all depends preference. I was just wondering because I know there's a gala this Friday that the the birthday joy program is putting on, and they actually have me emceeing for some some reason. They asked me to emcee, and I said, you know what, I'll do it. And then they're they're making me wear a tux though. That's what I was asking about the uh, like the the attire and everything else. I was like, really? That's what I'm thinking in my head. Okay, yeah, the casual thing, and they're making me wear a tux at this one. <laughs> well, when you come to ours, you can be casual. So <laughs> awesome, yeah. And then there's I know there's one on the 24th and the 25th. There's another one February, and then there's yours on the 20th. And the Santa Fe Chamber Gala is the 31st. Yes, so it's a very busy time. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's gala season. It is. So get your tux out if you don't have one. Maybe hit up, um, you know, there's an awesome tuxedo shop in, in Alvin that donated that one that I'm going to wear. Oh, good. So so hit them up. And I, I believe the gentleman's name was David. He fitted me at uh, at Butler's Courtyard, and it was pretty easy. You know the weird thing about that? He was like, I can already tell what size you are just by looking at you. I was like, really? <laughs> and I was, doubt, I was doubting. And then he was like, yep. And he, like, said the size, and he was like, yep, just as I said. He's like, he guessed my weight, like, everything. Wow. Well, it's pretty impressive. He's done that a He's time a pro. or two. He's a pro. <laughs> So the gala is taking place 2 20, 20 mm -hmm. for the Santa Fe Education Foundation. So last year y'all had a gala. Is that something that y'all have done the entire 10 years of being in existence? Yes, yes. And it's come a long way. So this is actually our second or third. I feel like it's our second year of having it at the Nestler Center. Yeah. So It's a good spot. It is. It is. It's yeah. Not too far away. And, and a lot of people know where it is already. Mm-hmm. And it's set up for that that kind of thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're um, busy preparing our first uh, brochure, and we'll use that as a marketing tool for the whole year. And so um, part of businesses securing their sponsorships is that they can get recognized in that brochure with their logo. And, um, you know, we just want to show them all love and respect sure. for what they do for us yes. and what, you know, how much that money how much of an impact that money has on on the students in our in our school district. So anyway, yeah, we've been busy getting the brochure ready and all the last minute details that come along with 
preparing for a gala. Yeah. So who generally sponsors? Is it businesses, individuals? Uh, are politicians allowed to to sponsor as well? Who's who's we, allowed to? Yes, all of the above. All of the above. So, and we have a wide array of sponsors, and um, you know, I I don't like to say one and leave Not out another. Um, but yes, we have, um, like I said, a wide array. Yeah. And, you know, families. So, everyone. All right. So we're going to kick it on to the FM. If you're watching on Facebook, feel free to share this out. We're talking about the Santa Fe Education Foundation. I have Gina here in studio sharing about everything they have going on, including the gala, some upcoming events, and then where that, um, you know, all of the the support that you give them, where's it going to go? How's, you know, how's it going to be spent supporting the kids and the teachers? And we're going to be learning about some of the past stuff and maybe some of the future. Good morning. This is KHEA Radio 99.5 FM. Right now it's 9.03 on a Tuesday. Actually, today is a Wednesday. Yesterday was Tuesday because I had Dr. Chop in. <laughs> time, you know, time in uh, the new year kind of just flows differently. This is Kickstart. I'm Gardy. Gina, how are you today? I'm doing amazing. How are you? Has the year been good to you so far? I can't complain at all. We've been healthy, which is a huge bonus. December was really rough for us, so... Because, I'd say it's off to a great start. Like flu and yes. just random nastiness? Yes. yes. The entire month, it seemed like. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same at my house. But we've been we've been healthy, too. Like, got that out of the way in 2019. <laughs> and then it, it's like a healthy a healthy thing. Like, we even kept my son home from school one day because there was a kid and a couple of, even the teacher, they were like, yeah, there's some sickness stuck on. I was like, okay, he's going to stay home on Friday, and it's like a longer weekend. Let everybody heal up. Mm-hmm. It seemed like it, it worked out. Yes. <laughs> it worked out okay. You know, it. Um, speaking of sickness, the last time I was here, I, we were preparing for our big Giving Tuesday campaign. And I had thought a couple months prior, you know, I sure hope that week goes smoothly. And sure enough, on my birthday, on Giving Tuesday, the same day, Mm-mm. I had one home with the flu and one threw up at school. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> and so... Things kind of went south, but we still had a fantastic, um, we had received really overwhelming support for Giving Tuesday, and we um, more than tripled what we did last year, so we'll consider that a win and, um, you know, forward motion for the future. Awesome. So did y'all hit y'all's, y'all's goal and we everything? We did not. We did not, but like I said, uh, totals are around 1,800, so last year we did around 500. Yes. So, That's great. You know, can't complain given that I was home with two sick little ones. Yeah. You know, I think Giving Tuesday is still something that people are, I guess, accepting into like culture just like the other. You know, mm-hmm. people have heard of Black Friday, obviously, and then, you know, Cyber Monday is kind of newer. Yes. But Giving Tuesday. A- absolutely. Is great. You know, when I was um, really getting my feet wet in this position, that's when I first learned about it. And I had not heard of it before. So. You know, given that it's newer, I mean, it's been around since 2012, it takes time for, you know, yes. everyone to learn about it. And then also, you know, it's kind of challenging, tucked in right between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So. Mm-hmm. Can you share your position at the Santa Fe Education Foundation? How long have you been there now? So I've been there for, I've been the marketing coordinator for about 10 weeks now. <laughs> How's that going so far? It's going amazing. Jeannie and I are working hard every day um, since Jody's not with us and, um, you know, we're keeping things moving in the right direction and really having a lot of fun along the way. So. Yeah. Has it been everything that you thought it would be? Yes. Um, and more. So um, I haven't really been able to get out too much, you know, just buttoning up those um, day-to-day activities. But, yes, it's been – it's really been great. Well, one thing I've noticed is that you are on top of the game. You like to get things planned ahead before waiting for the last minute. Yes. Um, KHEA is doing a – is producing a video for the, the 10-year Thank you anniversary. Thank you very Thank you. Yes. And you've been a lifesaver to us, you know, for us, like, getting the schedules out and making it all happen. <laughs> and is it condensed – time as possible which is really cool yes well we're looking forward to an action-packed monday so <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a long day but it's gonna be a good day it will yeah you have to like eat in between you know traveling between campuses so. yes <laughs> yeah so what what is that gonna look like how, how uh what kind of areas are we gonna be going to it's all in santa fe it is and so i scheduled everyone by campus so you know obviously it makes the most sense so, so i believe we start out at admin and then go over to I'd be lying if I told you but um yes we go to all of the campuses okay so but you know by the time you set up at each campus and interview and then take your 
still shots and use the drone, you know, Mm -hmm. take a little bit of time. Yeah, and then the setup. That's one thing sometimes people don't don't think of like okay if you set up if you're gonna use a tripod you got to check this going outside in in the texas weather it may be rainy or hot and humid go inside to the ac things like fog up and you just kind of just have to let Mm -hmm. it sit there and wait exactly yeah yeah so So hopefully we built in enough cushion so it'll be good as long as the people like the other campuses are lenient and understanding being like hey the lens wouldn't unfog we had to wait a little bit you know we're Mm -hmm. on the way i think and people usually are understanding as long as you communicate you right. know, with them calling the next the next campus and stuff. Right. So I, yeah, I think it'll go great. So whenever somebody donates and sponsors and supports the Santa Fe Education Foundation, mm-hmm. what are they exactly supporting and who? So that's a really qu- great question, and it's up to the individual or to the sponsor where they want that money to go. And generally, generally they say, you know, you know, I want it to go toward a, a grant, but I would like to follow that. I would like to see, you know, when it's implemented. I'd like pictures. Um, we always invite them to come along on the grant parade so that they can deliver the check themselves. Wow. Um, but then we also have some say, you know, use it how you wish. Um, it depends. So if we write a grant for something, there's very specific guidelines that you have to follow. And we make sure that, you know, those are followed through. Um, so yeah, it's up to, it's up to the individual donor. Is that generally the case, I guess, in education foundations or just organizations? It seems to be at yeah. least with our education foundation, you know, and then we have donors who, um, they'll choose to support their teacher's classroom wish list, which mm-hmm. is usually around $500 or less. And so they'll, you know, that's a direct com- contribution you know where that's going Mm -hmm. yeah where can they see a copy or know what the the cost of that wish list is so a lot of times the teacher will share that out to the the parents or guardians of their students Um, they'll share it on social media but also by going on our website um, santafeisd.org slash education foundation under there we have a classroom wish list tab and you can, when you click on that, you can access all the different live classroom wish lists. Yes. And additionally, we'll have a wall of classroom wish lists at mm-hmm. the gala so that individuals and sponsors can choose to support those throughout the evening. What kind of things are, are on there? Have you had a chance to look at any of those wish lists? It is such a diverse uh, range of, of needs. So some are for classroom readers, you know, books for their students. Some are for alternative seating. Some are for um, fish tank and aquatic supplies for, you know, that type of class. So it's a really broad range. Yeah. I've had the opportunity to meet, you know, the mayor of Santa Fe, some of the city councilmen and, mm-hmm. and people who work with and for the city have, in, in my opinion, they're, they're great people. They are. Um, have they been a big support of the Education Foundation? Absolutely. In fact, um, Mayor Jason Tabor is one of the founding members of the Education Foundation. So, And he's going to deliver a proclamation Thursday night after the city council meeting for our 10-year anniversary. All right. So, yes, he's a huge supporter. What day is that? That's thir- this Thursday, the 23rd. Okay. And those are open to anybody, right? The, it is. Those mm-hmm. meetings? To the community. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we'll be sharing it out on social media as well. With video? Uh, yes. All right. Yeah. So right now it's 910. This is KHEARadio.com, 99.5 FM. You know, there's there's something that we had talked about, and I should have asked you off off the air if, if we could bring it up Uh-oh. because I am interested, <laughs> but I don't want to put you on the spot about it. But there was a, there was an article that I saw floating around about some, some TV stuff. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like a potential TV program or a show hey, for a yes show. i know exactly where you're going with are, that are you open to talking about that sure okay so is it hgtv it is hgtv so i just happened to be scrolling through facebook um a week ago saturday or sunday and found that hgtv is looking f- to do a hometown takeover Take over, so, make over everything. Yeah? Exactly. Yeah. And so I thought, oh my gosh, Santa Fe needs to do this. So I started tagging Jason and it just kind of snowballed from there. And now we have a group um, who've been diligently working on photos and interviewing community members and, you know, businesses and the whole nine yards. So that's really cool. It's going to be very cool. I think Santa Fe has a, a good chance. There's, I think so. Yeah. 
there yeah there's definitely like a story there and it has that small hometown feel exactly and they could realistically come in and do a lot of a lot of good Mm -hmm. you know what are some things that you're thinking like what could they do because it said like houses businesses appeal like everything and to me it was like that's that's huge that's big it is it is so um i don't want to say too much sure um but you know just maybe they'll do some facelifting you know sprinkled throughout the town maybe do something with parks a community center i don't know these yeah. are kind of you know wish list items that everyone knows we want and need but it'll be interesting to see where it goes and like you said santa fe would be a great choice for hgtv because we're such a small town kind of nestled amongst all these larger towns you know and while we're growing we still want to maintain that small town santa fe but yet move in the right direction you yeah know? I know I've talked to to Mayor Tabor and like when it comes to growth and they're like, I'm like, so what are some things Santa Fe needs? Like we a grocery store, you know, some <laughs> other things like that. But, you know, slowly grow it out because you can't just like there's land, there's mm-hmm. there's opportunity. There's a lot of, of the roads are there. Right. You can just put stuff in. But if you grow too quickly. Yes. One, I think people may get upset and, and two, right it may that. not it may not work. Yes. So that just like a slow, a slow growth mm-hmm. that, that works for everybody. Exactly. All right. So we're talking to Gina with the Santa Fe Education Foundation. They are celebrating 10 years. Can you remind everybody when the gala is, who's invited, how can you get tickets, and what's it supporting? Absolutely. So our 10-year anniversary annual gala will be held on 2-2020, February 20th. It's a Thursday evening at the Nestler Center in Texas City. And tickets are available online, or you can give us a call directly and um, we can help you with those. Tickets are $50. Um, we have sponsorships starting at $250. And um, we're doing something special for our teachers, um, educators, and their significant others, where we have special pricing for $30 a ticket. And, um, you know, we even have some who call specifically to donate tickets for those teachers, or hmm. we'll have a sponsor purchase a large table and say, okay, well, we'll, we'll bring four from our company, but we want four teachers to sit with us. Yeah. And so, you know, I've really been, um, work, reaching out to the schools and letting them know this is a great opportunity for you to share what your needs are in the classroom because it's really a networking event for you. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So what kind of, of programming, what kind of I guess benefits to the the teachers and the students or after school stuff and what where does that like directly benefit? I know you said like the person can kind of pick, mm-hmm. but I think am I wrong? Isn't the robotics some of the ro- robotics? Robotics is yes, exactly. So um, that's partially funded by the Education Foundation. Um, so if somebody comes that evening and donates, you know, if they donate to a classroom wish list, that's going to directly benefit a teacher right then and there. Mm-hmm. Um, if they make a general donation through a sponsorship, like I said, they can designate how they want that money to be used. So we had a sponsorship by the Kathleen Caillou Foundation, who's who I uh, recognized yesterday as our donor of the day. And and their wishes are for that money to be used for our stream program, which is phenomenal. So, you know, we honor however they want that money to be used. All right. Can you explain, if somebody has never heard of stream, what is the stream program? So stream is science, technology, reading, engineering, art, and math. It's basically STEM, and you're adding in the reading and the art. Yeah. And um, we've grown a lot of awareness about that program Um, We started it in September of this past school year, so September 2019. And with any new program, you know, we filled up extremely quickly and had overwhelming response. And at the same time, we had upset parents, you know, if if their child wasn't able to get into the program. But thanks to our generous donors and sponsors, we have we will not have a wait list this semester. All right. And so, and we foresee growing to a summer program. So a summer camp for these kids where, you know, there are currently no summer programs offered in Santa Fe other than through the library. You know, the library puts on an amazing summer program. But other than that, there's really no camps. There are no camps. Wow. So that's where we're growing. Yes. Uh, Councilman Aleha had commented on the show the other day when I was talking to the Texas City 
library and they are opening after their renovation it's that it's that second or third week in february as well i think it's maybe the 18th and you know they've been closed for about six months but he was mentioning that the santa fe library is about to get a a facelift and expansion Mm -hmm. as well so um that's good i assume maybe they'll even be able to offer more programs as as well and yeah maybe so i'm not sure what all of that looks like i heard of the expansion i think it's a wonderful thing um for the community And yeah, I mean, maybe they'll have like a, you know, community room that's larger than what they have where they they'll have the ability to do that. Yes. So So you have you have twins. Yes, I do. What are their names? How old are they? Um, And do they go to school in Santa Fe and do they get to participate in it like the robotics or other programs? So um, Lane and Landon are both nine years old and they're in fourth grade. Uh, They have Miss Stearns and Miss Chamberlain this year. And um, they took part in the stream program, which they absolutely loved. And I just, it's so neat to hear it from from their perspective, what they liked about it, and yeah. the, you know, the little things that they pick up on. So working in a group, meeting new kids, and now, you know, they're friends with somebody they didn't know before. So um, on top of just the hands-on learning that they're doing after school. Yeah. So are they from the same the same school they're working with kids like in different grades or classes and stuff that's correct so there's a k through two uh cohort at each campus a third through fifth at each elementary campus and then there's one at the junior high and then the high school yeah i remember being a kid and those were some of my favorite things to do like because you see your same teacher the same students and you have you know your friends and best Mm -hmm. friends but you get to go into like a different class and kind of mix it up and you're like hey you're cool. You know, like, let's be friends and, and, and you get to meet just new yeah. people. Yeah. And sometimes it sparks creativity it and just sure all kinds does. of different stuff. It sure does. And, you know, I'll go into the classroom and take pictures and videos to help promote our program. And I just love standing back in the corner and observing how the kids work together and, you know, how um, the teacher does a great job. She'll have them close their eyes at the beginning after she's given them the task and they have to envision how they're going to make this happen. Wow. And then they'll come together, they draw popsicle sticks and they'll come together as their group and they talk about what their ideas are. And they'll try one if it doesn't work, then they'll try somebody else's. And then at the end, they have to present their product to the class. And they don't really realize it, but that's an amazing skill, you know, to start at this age. And then they share, you know, what didn't work and, you know, what worked and like I said the final product. So Yeah. It's been great. I feel like teamwork is the biggest the biggest thing there because mm-hmm. it's not I mean whenever you get into the the real workforce and even you know in upper grades there's a lot of group projects sometimes you find out that some ideas are better than others but just trying to do it in a way where everybody is like okay you yes. know because people still have feelings even if their idea is not good <laughs> exactly and all the different personalities you yeah know, you're learning how to work with with those at a young age yeah all right you know, so you, your kids, have they been in that Santa Fe School District for, for a couple of years now? Yes, they've been there since um, kindergarten. Since kindergarten, mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. Are you originally from here? I know we talked about this before, but where are you from? I'm from Illinois. That's right. I I'm remember you went Illinois. to school over there. Yes. But why did you come down here? I met my husband. That'll do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that'll and do. that'll be 17 years this year. All right. So... Has, does it go by pretty quick? It does, because I remember when I moved here thinking, okay, so when I've lived here 10 years, will I will I be a Texan? Does that make me a Texan living here 10 years? I'm yes. now at 17 already, <laughs> and, you know, I go home, and my friends think I have an accent, and here people <laughs> ask me where I'm from. <laughs> wow. So. So I'm in May, I'll be married for six years, and it's gone by so quick. It's nuts. That's it's, good. I know. It's, it's really crazy. Time flies when you're having fun. Yes, it yeah it does. Yeah, we are having fun, and um, yeah, she we're about to have a a boy in March, so yeah, we're excited. We're gonna have another another well, boy. Congratulations! Yeah, so we're pumped about that. So, if somebody is you know in the area, and maybe they don't have kids yet, could you sell them on Santa Fe? Like, why raise a family there? Is that a good school district? You know, who is it for everybody? Is it not for everybody? Is it a specific person? That's a lot of questions. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, y- you know, like you said, I mean, it just depends on, on what your wants are. I came from a town of 250 people. And when my husband said he was from a small town, I wouldn't call it a small town. <laughs> you know, it's really like a, a suburb. But now that I live here, it truly is a small town because 
you still have to drive 20 to 30 minutes to get to, you know, a larger grocery store or mm-hmm. to get to Target or, you know, whatever. Um, but it is a hometown is in that it's a lot of deep rooted families and a lot of history. And, um, you know, it's very easy to get to know people. And um, I'm not sure that, you know, it's like that everywhere else. Um, and you don't really have a lot of traffic. So. Mm-hmm. That <laughs> Although the traffic nice. is getting worse, but it could, it's nothing like Leak City or, yeah. You know. Well, the, the, the city lines to me and it all, it's all blurred. You know, it's like, am I in Santa Fe? Am I in Hitchcock? Am I in Lamarck? And that's kind of cool as well. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you, if you go somewhere and you actually see a map, it's like, you know, my entire life, I thought that was Hitchcock and it's Santa Fe, you know? Right. I, I find out, you know, like businesses and just stuff like that. It's mm-hmm. like, well, it's crazy. And something else that's unique is that you can actually have, you know, large amounts of land, even an acre. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, somebody who wants to have a little wiggle room and a little more privacy, it's a great place. It works out. So, yeah. It kind of reminds me of my small town in that we live on the outside just enough to where, you know, it's it gets really dark and you don't have the overwhelming city glow. And yeah. Um, it's nice and quiet. So in Illinois, there was 250 people in your town? There were. Mm-hmm. 250 people. What was that like growing up with a town of 250 <laughs> people? Well, my my dad's fam- my dad grew up as a little boy there. So, you know, going to school, it was everybody that he, kind of the same teachers and, you know, everybody went to the same church. And it was, I mean, it was all I knew. Yeah. I had a paper route. Really? You know, On the bike? On a bike. And in the winter, I rode a snowmobile. That was a lot of fun. What? <laughs> How far do people live, though? If it's like 250 people, I'm thinking, like, and they're all getting newspaper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or you'd have to go, like, okay, I got to ride. You know, they own 10 acres. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to go to throw this newspaper. Oh, no, it was not like that. It was very compact. Awesome. Very compact. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're going to take a quick break on the FM. If you're listening on KHEARadio.com or 99.5 FM, you can always join us on the Facebook stream. Search KHEA Radio, and there's video as well. This is Kickstart. I'm Guardy. All right. So we're still on, on Facebook. Okay. And we can talk for a bit more and then go back and remind everybody sure. about the the gala and everything else. So what's the, the website for you guys? So it's um, sfisd.org and then backslash education foundation. Okay. And then through there, there's um, one of the very first tabs is um, the gala. And then there's the classroom wish list. So they will um, they can secure their sponsorship through the website. Or they can call us, mm-hmm. whichever they prefer. Okay. Some prefer to mail a check. You know, we, we accept it all. I bet y'all would even go pick it up. Yes, it's like, I'm, I don't trust mail this check, but <laughs> I got what? one. I'm on I the way. I would love to recognize a donor of the day where I could pick up a check in hand. Yeah. That's my challenge. Where did you get the idea for the donor of the day? I don't know. It just came to me. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to think of ways to really, you know, recognize and give more exposure to those um, sponsors. Of course, so. yeah. And do uh, you have anything else in the works like that? You never know. You know, the Texas City Lamarck Chamber, they do, like, Thank You Thursdays, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And, and they'll show up at a local business with, like, donuts or something else that isn't healthy. And they take pictures and all that. That's a good idea. Yeah. You know, we started something on the 10th of the month, given that it's our 10-year anniversary. So on January 10th, I posted a picture of the very first captured via picture um, board for the Santa Fe Education Foundation. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's fun. to see how, how that progresses and yeah. what fun activities we do throughout the year. Is there still the same amount of people on the board? Like back then, I don't know how many people are on there, like five or ten or... I would say looking at the picture and looking at our list now, it seems to be about the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And whenever there are board members, are those voted in? And what do they look for, I guess, when picking those individuals? So we have a um, nominating committee who handles all of that. And we had um, some open spots, including mine, um, for this new year. And we have our board meeting on Tuesday night. And those new members um, who've been chosen by the nominating committee will attend and then they'll, you know, do a brief little intro about themselves and about what they do and about, you know, 
why they want to be involved with the Santa Fe Education Foundation. And then at the end of the meeting, they're voted. Um, There's a vote. Mm-hmm. Who who gets to vote? The entire board. The entire board. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So, has there any? I don't know. I asked the same question. Yeah, I know what you're gonna ask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nope, it's never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> well, it seems like if you're nominated, you know, there's a nominating committee. Mm-hmm. They are handpicking people specific, you know, roots in, in Santa Fe and, and have the best interest in, in mind. Absolutely. And um, I, I reached out to each of the new candidates and invited them to the board meeting and looking at their applications. It was pretty impressive. So we're very excited, you know, that they're interested and that they'll be a part of our foundation. All so. right. And then um, I'll recognize each of them on social media as well after the board, after the board, yeah, you know, approves. Yeah. So after after the chamber, is there any other like events or special dates that are that are coming up or other fundraising opportunities? Yes, we have several um, this year. I called it the chamber. I meant the you know what I meant the gala. The, after the gala after on the twentieth, our education foundation gala. Yes. Yes. Um, April 4th is the Big Crawfish Bash, which is a huge event, and I believe it's held out at um, at the uh, Gulf Greyhound Park. Yes. And they, um, they donate their proceeds to a wide array of organizations, including local education foundations. And so um, a portion of the proceeds that day will come back to us. And we always have a group who volunteers to help, you know, run yeah. that event. I have a question about that. Yeah. So the Big Crawfish Bash, it I haven't been yet, but I, I need to go. You being from Illinois, do they have crawfish no. over there? Okay, so when I was a little girl, I had a neighbor, and he would, we didn't call him, he called him Crawdads. Crawdads. And so he would collect crawdads from the in ditch. a cooler. <laughs> yeah, in the, from the ditches. Yeah. And it never occurred to me that you would eat them. So then when I moved here, my husband was like, let's go eat crawfish. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so. Do you eat them? Of course. I mean, everyone has to go to Pooks. So. Yeah. Got to go to Pooks. Okay. I was just making sure, like, I don't know. Yeah. So I, you are an official, you're official Southerner Texan now. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, and then, so after April 4th, then um, April 23rd is the Education Foundation Night at the Galveston County Fair and Rodeo. And that's always a lot of fun. They have special pricing for families, and then a portion of the proceeds goes back to the Education Foundations in Galveston County. Cool. So they split that up. It's really Yeah. Cool. yeah. I mean, that's that really entire cool. thing, if you look at, like, the, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, I know, and so this is something I learned last year. We went and did our, our program from there last year, which was oh, awesome. Cool. But they... Uh, they say it's like a, just a giant scholarship foundation is pretty much what it is. Does the one down here, I guess it kind of works similarly if they're giving back, you know, money like that to the to the schools and stuff. Uh, perhaps, but I really couldn't yeah. speak to that. I really don't know. It's pretty neat, yeah. Mm-hmm. And when is that? That's April, April? 23rd. Mm-hmm. And then um, we'll have end-of-year awards and um, special program that we take part in with the school district. Um, at the, you know, of course at the end of the year, and I don't know what date that will be yet. And then for back to school, we do a large, um, vendor fair for the teachers at convocation. And that's always a huge success. Um, and we do a new teacher luncheon and what's convocate. What did you say? Convocation is where they come together before school starts and they have, you know, the, they students and the, teachers or just teachers just the teachers okay um they're in the auditorium and there's messages from the district they bring in a guest speaker and so it's kind of an all day or most of the day it's event. a yeah it's a huddle like teacher mm-hmm. training making sure everybody's starting on the same page right yeah it's important to do those things then periodically do those things to make sure because you know just there's a lot of stuff going on in everybody's exactly. lives and, and stuff just exactly. to make sure everybody's on that that yeah. same and then this fall, um, we're, we're actually moving our annual 5K fun run and um, helicopter ball drop from the spring because it's so busy in May with prom and Mother's Day. We were always at conflict with that. So we're moving it to the fall. So our um, annual 5K fun run and helicopter ball drop will be held sometime in October, I believe. We haven't set the date yet, but 
Awesome. So for anybody interested, you know, we're not it's not going away. Yeah. It's just getting moved to the fall. That's good running weather. It is. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will be. Uh, like October, pro- I'm in my head. It's like, oh, it's a nice cool. There's a breeze. Yeah. People wearing like the headbands around their ears. Everyone's getting ready for fall. And, yeah. yeah. That'll be a good time. All right. So we're going to play one more spot. I think we can go back on, on the FM and just remind everybody about the gala, mm-hmm. how they can find tickets. Just get involved. Um, and this next spot is actually Legacy Collision in Hitchcock, Texas, which I know that they are supporters of Santa Fe mm-hmm. as well. And I think that they, I think that they were one of the sponsors at the last year's. Um, I believe so. Yeah, at mm-hmm. the Santa Fe Education, because mm-hmm. that's how I found out. Of, I think I found out about it that way. They're like, "Hey, have you had them on?" And, and we had a couple of people. We had someone from the Chamber and the Education Foundation on. Okay. Last last yeah, uh, those year. ladies are so they're awesome. They're really good people. Yeah. All right. Here we go right now. Good morning. This is KHEA Radio 99.5 FM. It's 932. This is Kickstart. I'm Gardy. I have a special guest here in studio. I got Gina. She is with the Santa Fe Education Foundation. And I think you have like a lot of other hats that you wear as well, right? Just a few. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. a few. But right now you're wearing the, the education one. Yes. I took my mom hat off for just a little bit now. Yeah. Do you do some stuff with the chamber as well? Um, no, we attend and we support the chamber, but yeah. Not yet. Right. Not yet. <laughs> like I feel like one day they're gonna be like, Can you come work for the chamber and pull you some other ways? Um, but so you're you're new at the education foundation as far as like in, in your current position. So can you share your position and I guess how is how is it going so far? Yeah, so um I'm the new marketing coordinator and I've been on board for about ten weeks. And it's been very busy. Um, we're con- Jeannie and I are constantly collaborating, sharing ideas, um, visions for the future, um, and how we can just take the education foundation to the next level. Yeah. So it's um, it's been a busy time. Um, when I started, you know, we were ramping up for Giving Tuesday, and then it was holiday break, and then ever since we've been back from holiday break. We're really gearing up for the gala on two twenty twenty. So yes. I'm very excited about that. Okay. Um, so if, if somebody's never been to a gala before, mm-hmm. they come to this one, um, what what can they expect? So, um, like I was sharing with you earlier, the feedback that we got was, you know, it's like a family atmosphere. And I it had been a long time since I had been to a gala and I attended my first time last year and, and it was just that. You know, you see a bunch of people that you know and um, you can network. And it's just a, it's a great evening. And we'll have a lot of surprises this year since it's our 10 year anniversary. We have um, an MC and we have um, a guest speaker, keynote speaker, who will be fantastic. So, mm-hmm. And some other surprises tucked in there as well. All right. Yeah. So, so are, y- are y'all looking for sponsors or vendors? Absolutely. So sponsors um, will want to secure their sponsors, sponsorships as soon as possible. Because we're wrapping up our um, our brochure that will be used for marketing throughout the year, so their logo will be placed in that brochure and used for the duration of the year. And um, we also place their logo, depending on what sponsorship level they they purchase, logo on the website, um, logo on social media, um, just to name a few. And um, tickets can be purchased, sponsorships can be purchased on the website. If you go to www.sfisd.org slash education foundation, and there um, will be a gala tab, and you can click on that and, and take care of all of that online. Or they can give us a call at the, at the um, Education Foundation office at 409-925-9080, um, or they can mail us a check as well. So. Or I can come by and pick it up. Just Yeah, anything <laughs> drop works. Drop us a comment, and I'll swing by. Yeah. All right, that's that's awesome. So everything can be done online. It's easy. Or give a call mm-hmm. and and you know work that out. Send in a check if you would like to support the Santa Fe Education Foundation. Um, is is there anything else that you'd like to share? So while you're here today? at that gala, we're going to reveal the video that you guys are producing for us. Yes, we're very excited about. So we'll unveil it at the gala and then we'll use it you know throughout the year as well. So all about our ten year anniversary. Yeah, ten years. Yeah. So there's been a lot. I mean, to start an organization from, you know, from nothing mm-hmm. and then for it to, to last and, you know, for 10 years, 
that's like a pretty big milestone that that 10 year mark exactly and so many of those founding members are still heavily involved today and so hearing some of those stories of you know how it started and where it's at now and you know where they'd like to see it go it's it's pretty awesome yeah cool well i look forward to first of all seeing the video the finished product (laughs) (laughs) but it's gonna be a it's gonna be a great time so yeah make sure that you check out the the website if you want to secure tickets you can do that or support the santa fe education foundation it's february 20th of this year you're gonna have the opportunity to have a good time bring your entire family sponsor a table there's a lot of things that you can do to get involved this is khea radio 99.5 fm all right facebook you're awesome is there any anything else you got anything else you like I think we touched on, on like I know, pretty much everything. I was racking huh? my brain as you were kind of closing, and I think I've touched on everything. Um, you know, just we have those special um, reveals that we'll have at the gala, and we have the classroom wish list there on display for donors to support, and it'll be it'll just be a great time. So looking well, forward to it. All right, me too. Thank you very much for yes. having me back. Well, thank you for coming back. Yeah. All right, hey, I'm going to end this stream, and we'll be back here in a bit. All right.